moves most efficiently and with things such as landing, balancing, even posturally, just standing and how she sits and walks. So Coach Tebow did not give us a timetable on exactly when we might see her back, but he did say we're not counting on having her for a while, Tiffany. Well, thanks so much, Kim, but we know they are eagerly awaiting her return as we are just about set to tip here from D.C. It's the Mystics in Sky in action. Sky controlling the ball first. Courtney Vandersloot running the show for Chicago, one of the best assisters in the game. Flute always looking to get her teammates involved. Turns it over here as Candace Parker hands it over. It's Leilani Mitchell back the other way. Natasha Cloud finds Ariel Atkins on the wing. Wide open and knocks it down. First three points of the game. And that was one of the biggest concerns defensively for James Wade is the transition of the Washington Mystics, in particular with Natasha Cloud back in the lineup. Well, this is a Chicago Sky team who can put up a lot of points, high power, but the addition of Candace Parker, very interesting, but good defense there from the Mystics, deflected that shot from Stephanie Dolson. One of the things that we'll see is a lot of transition up and down the court. Here's one example. Well, it is very hard to stop Natasha Cloud when she has a full head of steam. And there's two point guards on the floor with Cloud and Leilani Mitchell. So the ball movement should be good for Mike Tebow's team. And that is a staple of their offense. Tina Charles, who is looking to have a grand season here. Cloud finds her on the wing. She's one who can step out and shoot. Everybody can stretch the floor for Mike Tebow. Place on off the mark there. Chicago Sky getting used to kind of this new team as that last preseason game against the Fever in which they won. That was the first time that Candace Parker touched the floor for the Sky. They dump it off to her. Copper to Sky. And there's Candace Parker's first two points of this one. Good two-man game between Parker and Copper. Notice that Tina Charles is guarding Candace Parker. That is the matchup to watch early. Mitchell coming off, rolling finds Teresa Plaisance. Plaisance, who is a really good three-point shooter and a good example right there. Teresa Plaisance is healthy. She has had some back issues and surgeries over the last few years, but Mike Tebow was encouraged by how she came in physically. And you're right, she can stretch the floor. She's exactly what their offense calls for. Parker stepping out for three and knocking it down. Well, Candace Parker, the last couple of seasons, has had some excellent shooting seasons and then a quick turnover underneath the basket in the sky. Get it right back. Good ball movement by Chicago, spreading the floor. And you see Parker always pointing, always dictating, defense sagging. And she gets it to go. And Diamond DeShields there with the bucket. Glad to see her back and healthy as she left the bubble late in August with a quad injury. But she is looking to have a nice comeback season here as a charge called on Atkins. Good job by Chicago there. Packing the paint, anticipating the drive, and Atkins just a little bit out of control. Think about Diamond to Shields going back to her third overall pick by the Sky back in 2018. Term pro as a junior and one of the important pieces to this offense, but also defensively as well, looking to see her step things up on that end of the floor. We know what she could do offensively. Copper, who's coming off a breakout season, is able to knock down the three. I'm just in awe of Kalia Copper and how she continues to add dimensions to her game. We see her hit the three, but that's what she does best. She's a slasher, incredibly explosive. She doesn't get enough credit for the player she's been in this league. And you see good defense there, just riding Atkins all the way. Personal foul called against the Scott. Well, Kalia Copper is a Rutgers product, but Nigel Laney had 30 last night. Well, Copper is joining the party. Hits the outside shot. Good ball movement and sharing the ball there. Candace Parker and a good heads up play by the Shields. You mentioned her defense this year being more important. Gets the steal and Copper gets the finish. 
Charles fall back, no good. Running in for that rebound and skying was Copper. Stephanie Dolson leaves it short. Natasha Cloud back in a Mystics uniform after opting out of last season, wanting to focus on social justice. And you'll really see Chicago pack the paint defensively. James Wade has three areas of focus for his defense. One of them is taking away points in the paint. So we saw a charge earlier. We saw them collapsing there. They'll spend a lot of time and force Washington to get hot from the long range. Play sauce once again, uh, putting it up. And she's got five points, just two or four from the floor now for Teresa Play Sons. Chicago Sky team turns it over. Here come the Mystics. Leilani Mitchell, you mentioned one of the point guards who can run a really important piece for this crew along with Natasha Cloud who has a clear path to the basket and in. Diamond to Shield spending too much time preparing for that screen. Leaves the lane wide open. And if you are going to prepare to ice, you have got to make sure you got some help back there. Again, another turnover for the Sky in transition. Cloud finds Mitchell playing a little two-man ball. The trifecta is short. And the WNBA's leading rebounder a season ago comes up with it. Vandersloot over to Copper. And that's exactly what Courtney Vandersloot does. She can help, assist, whatever dish you like it, she's got. And this is what we're expecting to see from Chicago. Again, with the focus on the defensive end, with DeShields and Copper, that transition game, two of the best facilitators in this league with Vandersloot and, and Candace Parker. Well, Leilani Mitchell leaves that short, although a really good three-point shooter. But Vandersloot coming off the season where she had an NBA record, 10 assists per game. That was... The first time a player averaged double digits, but again, trying to get in sync offensively here on really both sides of the floor with China. 448 remaining in this first quarter. It's Chicago up by four on the road. The WNBA. Let's keep doing that, okay? Let's share the ball. Let's enjoy it. Enjoy the process, okay? There's only so many times you get to start the season. That's the veteran leadership that you just absolutely love. And hearing that, LaChina, I want to play with Candace Parker if I could. Well, that's why James Wade was excited about her coming to Chicago, because she is a player that knows how to get over the hump, having led a team to a championship, carried the load on her shoulders. She knows how to do that and be that. And that's what she brings to a Chicago team. They needed her experience. He said that she was the missing piece for that group, LaChina, and so, We'll see how she bolsters this lineup and what she's able to do throughout the season. Charles putting up two points, her first of the game. Well, coming out of that timeout, you can tell Mike Tebow said, we have to get Tina Charles the ball. He made it clear to us we are running plays through her. He wants her to get touches. She is screaming for it on the back side. They have got to get the ball in her hands more often. Allie Quigley checking in for the sky, 14 in black leading score from a season ago, but Kalia Copper is pacing the way so far for the sky. Off the mark there. Cloud getting out, half court set. The Chavante Zealous in the ball game. And right now, when you are assessing just what you're seeing from Chicago on the offensive end, what stands out to you? Well, I mean, this team is just starting to play together, right? Allie Quigley and Courtney Vandersloot arrived late. Um, you know, they've got players that are still coming in and in quarantine protocol. So not all the pieces are here. Good transition basket by Kira Leslie. But they're still working through the kinks. But you see them trying to move the ball quickly and, and trying to get as many hands touching it and getting the defense to react as they can. Well, Vander Sluden quickly had a special connection on the court as they had it off the court as well. They found each other quite a bit. And a student do fall 
called for the traveling violation. And one thing I think people don't understand about the WNBA is that these players are coming from playing in other countries, in other systems, using different terminology with different players. So it's not like it's just been an off season with the same team we had last year, because many of the pieces are returning. You are on a completely different team. To that point, LaChina, when you look at this Washington Mystics group, I mean, we've seen three different iterations of it over the last three seasons, and they've got to get a mix of players like Tina Charles, who opted out last season because of medical reasons, and then those who came over from overseas after playing every day. That's a nice balance that you have to find as Quigley knocking it down on the other end. She has the most points in team history, and she is one of the best three-point shooters in the game. Last possession for Washington. Tina Charles got that touch on the low block. She was patient enough to let the defense work, and this time showing that she can knock it down from the outside, and that's going to be an important aspect of her game playing in this Washington Mystics system is can she knock down the long ball consistently? Again, Mike Tebow likes to have those pose who can pick and pop Shooting it from deep, just checking in is Brittany Boyd Jones. And Jones, who was signed on an emergency hardship with Azaray Stevens out. And we, again, we keep mentioning the first part of this season, especially the first week or two, very different look for a lot of teams because they're still adding pieces and waiting for players to fill out the roster. Allie Quigley can't get free of Kiera Leslie, but right here on the stretch, Brittany Boyd-Jones, not known for knocking down the three consistently, but does it there. And that's the way you want to start out the season, you know, get an opportunity to hit a roster. Other coaches and other teams are watching. And Tina Charles is going to get a break here. Inbound violation for... Washington, so they hand the ball over. Well, as a part of the historic 25th season, the WNBA launched the inaugural Commissioner's Cup in season competition. Make sure you download the WNBA app to check out the schedule, leaderboard, and to connect with fans live during the Commissioner's Cup games. There will be 60 in total, 10 per team. And that is something that we are all looking forward to, something new, and it just breeds another level of competition within the season. Yeah, I mean, I just love the new CBA. I think there are so many things included in this year's CBA, or the new CBA, that make the WNBA better all the way around. Yes, the Commissioner's Cup, but we saw the effects of a player movement because there's more money to go around for top players and GMs having to make tough decisions. By the way, we need more teams. <laughs> we have to have expansion. Players like Lexi Brown should be on a roster. Indeed, and that's one of the you know difficult parts. You have a total of 144 players in total across 12 teams, and you know Kathy Engelbert, you know said that these 60 games and going throughout the first part of the season is just going to again make it all the more entertaining and more importantly some prize money up for grabs as well i was gonna say can we just hit on that five hundred thousand? okay bottom line can we get to the point money please and we saw that more with the cba as you mentioned as diamond to shield and transition and what athleticism and length that she adds to the perimeter lachina She's just fun to watch. I mean, look at her in the passing lane, pressuring the basketball. And, and she was as disappointed as anyone that she was not healthy last year, only played in 13 games. Oh, 22-19 in favor of Chicago. Well, this presentation of the WNBA presented by Google will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations.
to the WNBA on ABC. I'm joined by Kalia Copper. Kalia, Coach Wade has been preaching defense with this group. How do you think you guys have executed on that end so far? Uh, I think he's definitely challenged us, uh, me and Diamond especially, um, on just leading this team to be um, more defensive minded. I think we're, we're out there right now, picking up early, uh, making catches much tougher, fighting over screens. So we're just trying to set the tone early. And it's your first time sharing the floor with Candace Parker in live game action. How do you like how the offense is flowing with her on the floor so far? It, it just flows better. We're such a g great inflow team. Um, and she's just that point forward for us. Great passer. I love to play with her on the wing. And um, I think she's been a great vocal leader also. Thank you so much for the time, Kalia. You're welcome. Thank you. To Kim's point about the defense for Chicago, I mean, that's where they weren't very good last year. You know, their offense was fantastic. Their defense needed help. And James Wade actually sat Copper and Diamond DeShields down and showed them video of Elena Beard. He wants him to be that type of lockdown defender. And Beard, as you know, Tiffany, as good as it gets on that end of the floor. And when you think about just the style that he wants to implement, he said, yeah, I started in thinking about, you know, doing my offensive set first and trying to install that when I first came. But now I want to move to an aggressive, disruptive style. And you think about the time that they've had to do that. This is more of a traditional sense of having time in camp and getting to know your personnel with some additions. And again, it starts with the athletic wings with the shields and copper. Copper was also really important in that 10 nothing run back in the first quarter that helped them stretch their lead out. But now Washington closing that gap to just one. Devontae Zellis knocked down a couple of free throws there. Mike Tebow's excited about having some more experience on this roster. A player like Zellis, who has played on several different teams and, uh, again, can bring that experience. Into you do fall, and she makes it in. Second stint with the Chicago Sky. Traded to Dallas and then released after the 20 season and signed with Chicago. A lot of offseason movement, as you mentioned. Well, China, I, I think I'm curious to know what move stood out to you most as that was a nice find underneath the basket from the Shields and Dufault. Definitely Candace Parker for sure. I mean, I think it was rather surprising, at least to me. Um, I knew that, you know, things in L.A. were, were a little disappointing in how they ended in the last couple seasons, but that was definitely what stood out. Diamond DeShield coming off of a screen. Defense just, everyone's heads turned. Ball watching. <laughs> and that's something that we've heard players talk about when Candace Parker is on the floor. She's the one that turns head, but there is a great admiration just on this Sky team for the talents and what everybody can do. Charles getting the touch, finding the double team, and do fall. He's trying to figure out. She says, well, my hands were, were straight up. That's at least what she's arguing to the referee, but Charles draws the foul. She'll shoot a couple. I mean, Tina's asking for the basketball, and when she gets it in there, Boyd Jones really didn't make her presence felt. I don't know about that one. Might have been so body, but it looked clean up top. Well, let's take a look at the upcoming national TV schedule today on ABC. This is the first of a doubleheader here at 3 Eastern. You've got the Las Vegas Aces taking on the defending champ Seattle Storm. Then Sunday on CBS Sports Network, it's the Liberty and Fever followed by the Mercury and Connecticut, Connecticut Sun. Well, I'll talk about those games yesterday and opening day. You've got Sabrina Ionescu dropping the game winner. How about... Diana Tarazi as well with her late game heroics. What a fun opening night. Sabrina Ionescu with the double double with points, assists, had some rebounds as well. You mentioned Benajah Laney with the 30 points last night, her teammate, but Dirty Diana hitting the game winner. 
Struggled a little bit from the floor early, but when it counts, DT is going to show up, and she did that last night. Yeah, she had a full stat line, 14 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists, 3 blocks. Also like the way the young Dallas Wings squad looked. Candace Parker knocking that one down from the outside, but Wings got a win over the L.A. Sparks in their opener. A big one, a 94-71 decision as Alicia Gray was able to lead all scorers with 23 points. Of course, she got that new contract, multi-year deal. Dish left short by the Shields. Mystics trying to cut this seven-point deficit down with just over seven and a half remaining in the second quarter. Charles trying to get position. Good matchup here that you'll want to see as Charles and Parker going head-to-head. -head. Atkins on the rebound. And off the miss. Vander Sloot all the way in and bounces off. Hard bounce pass to Charles. Charles gets it right back to put back and one. Washington doing a much better job of involving Tia Charles in the offense and really starting their offense with her. It's a different look for the Mystics in some possessions, going right to her in the post, but this time in transition. She sticks with it. And one thing Mike Tebow told us is Tina Charles came in in incredible shape. She said her and her trainer in Brooklyn were working. They had a gym that they found that was open. Obviously, with COVID, everyone doesn't have access to facility, but Tina did. And she is a professional and very methodical in how she prepares for the season, and, and she's ready to go. Yeah. And she just talked about aligning herself physically, mentally, spiritually, trying to restore the joy that she found in playing all those years. We mentioned a former MVP, won it back in 2012, and she's got 11 points to lead all scores here this afternoon. Dolson sees interim just out, but she'll go to the charity stripe and shoot a couple. Teresa plays songs. Whistled for her first personal foul. And Stephanie Dolson took that one in on her for herself. That was, you know, she kept it, but she is also a very good facilitator. I mean, when you look at the passing ability of Dolson, Parker, and Sloot on the floor, the ball's gonna move. And as this offense and these players get used to playing together, it's gonna be a lot of fun to watch. Originally drafted by Washington back in 2014. And Dolson is the one who shot the ball exceptionally well in the wobble, especially two furs last season. Charles working on Parker and throws it too strong, too tall, and over the head of Mitchell. For more, let's check in with Kim Adams. Yeah, Tiffany LaChina, you guys were just talking about how good that Chicago ball movement can look at times. And we talked to Diamond DeShields yesterday, and she told us that sometimes watching practice, I mean, she just becomes a fangirl of her own teammates. She can't believe some of the plays her team can make. She said she watched a two-man game with Candace Parker and Courtney Vandersloot, and it nearly brought tears to her eyes. It was so beautiful. So Diamond DeShields certainly sees the capabilities that this group can have, Tiffany. Well, yeah, Diamond to Shields also just, you know, mentioned how much it means for her to play with a player like Candace Parker, what it means for her to be there, a player that she idolized and wanted to be like growing up. Used to don Tennessee gear all the time, got a chance to play at her dream school. And the fact that these two are on the same team, Candace Parker has a lot of admiration and respect for Diamond the Shields just talking about, hey, look, she's like, like me, you know, personality-wise when I was that age, and, and, and she just loves what she brings to the court. Candace excited about helping Diamond to see her defensive potential. She said it was 
Sandy Brondello and Olaf in Russia that first convinced Candace Parker that she needed to focus more on the defensive end and how special she could be on that end. Well, she was Defensive Player of the Year last year, and now she's trying to help Diamond the Shields find that aspect of her game. The left hand with the shot clock winding down for Mitchell won't go, and then some contact underneath the basket. Golson is foul. And speaking of which, that was a great defensive possession there by the Chicago Sky. Timeout taken on the court. Candace Parker, CP3. She could do a little bit of everything. Step back, eyeing down the three, knocking it down. Okay, girl, we see you. Three players in NBA and WNBA history to win MVP, Finals MVP, and Defensive Player of the Year and Rookie of the Year. Quite an impressive list. Elite company, La China. Yeah, Candace Parker, Tamika Catchings, and Michael Jordan. Congratulations to Tamika Catchings going into the Naismith Hall of Fame. Okay. She is the best two-way player to ever played in the WNBA, in my opinion, and there are a lot of great ones, but her defensive prowess consistently in this league second to none, and the accolades will tell the story, but there's been a lot of great ones, though. Cheryl Spruce is another one that did it on both ends. We're excited for Tamika and Kim Mulkey and Barbara Stevens, some of the folks on the women's side uh, going into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, shout out to Tamika Ketchings, just an Olympian, a WNBA champion, and the general manager of the Indiana Fever. Proud moment as she joined Kevin Garnett and to well, Duncan. And, and hey, you have to also remark that Candace Parker and Tamika Ketchings both went to Tennessee. So, oh, yeah, that, that has to be, there. That, that credit has to be, it has to go back to Pat Summit, you know, the late great Pat Summit and how important defense was to her um, and what those two players have accomplished goes back to her as well. I think in talking with Candace Parker last season and just what it meant for her to win the defensive player of the year, it was a hallmark of Pat Summit teams to rebound. And so the fact that she was able to lead the league in rebounding, and that was really the cornerstone of what made her so good on the defensive end. It's something that she felt like that Summit would be proud and is looking down, smiling right now. She's playing at a very high level to have been in this league 13 years in her 14th season. And, and they've had a lot of injuries. Eight knee surgeries to be exact. Natasha Cloud rejected there by Parker. Back the other way, up in transition, and Copper finishes it off. If you run in this Chicago Sky transition offense, the ball will find you. Ariel Atkins stepping back. 4-3, Charles trying to battle for that rebound underneath, able to do so, dumps it off to Atkins, and again, finds CP3, swatting it away. Shields keeping her balance. Copper all the way in, too strong. Tina Charles, the leading scorer for the Mystics, has to get going. She's the only player in double figures for Washington. And right now, just out of sorts. Well, Mike Tebow did share that their offense is a work in progress, but what's not a work in progress is Candace Parker using that length at the rim and then the passing ability, so dynamic. And that's been her imprint on this game of women's basketball. So many players we've talked to speak about how they looked up to Candace Parker. It's all the different things she can do on the court on both ends. A transcendent player is what her head coach, James Wade, mention of her and he said all she had to do was be herself that was the pitch to get her to Chicago and you see the impact she's making already and I say that from the bottom of my heart I left Naperville at 18 years old and now I'm returning at 35 and the lessons I've learned being gone have brought me back home 
Well, Candace Parker trying to make Chi Town title town. And funny enough, on the other side, during the timeout, we saw Elena Della Don getting her team together. That's exactly what she helped to bring to Washington back in 2019, the franchise's first ever championship as Parker knocks that one down. And so even though she's not able to play right now and they're awaiting her return, as Kim mentioned, she has still been a vocal leader and getting in the huddle and making herself known her presence felt even though she's not on the court. Well, something you talked about earlier was the phases of this Washington Mystics team as you see Elena Deladon there on your screen. And Natasha Cloud is coming back this year. You bring in Tina Charles, you bring in Elena Deladon, but you have no Emma Miesemann. Um, you have no Maisha Hines-Allen right now. This is where you see Elena Deladon really giving some instruction to this team. So there's a lot of new pieces and players that didn't play last year. A lot of players that weren't on that WNBA championship team two years ago. So, um, you know, we'll, we're going to see the best of this Mystic squad as they get healthier and um, as they get kind of all of their players back in rotation. And hopefully, eventually, Emma Mesa in back. Good defense there. And then they turn it right back over. But one of the things that, you know, Mike Tebow talked about was having some realistic expectations. They are not going to be the best version of themselves right now, but in time, they will get there. And statistically, if you know the Washington Mystics and their offense, the three-point shot is very important to them, and they are not knocking down the three well right now. Um, so knocking down some shots from long range would definitely help. Winning his coach in WNBA history, Mike Tebow, and he sees that lead extend as Copper hits the first of two free throws. Well, Tebow, a three-time WNBA Coach of the Year, and what he's really focused on, especially over last season, was trying to make sure developing young players in the system uh, because he was focused on the long term and not necessarily playing the short game, and that's how you've seen him approach this season, as you mentioned, LaChina, with the phases. And right now, They've got to find some spark plug to get them going. Just 9 of 30 from the floor. You mentioned just how they had done a great job. From three-point range, right now 3 of 14 from beyond the arc. The fadeaway from Cloud as the shot clock was winding down. And turnovers were one of the things that Mike Tebow mentioned. What is it? Hampered them in their preseason games. Yeah, 13 Chicago points off of Washington turnovers. We've seen the sky get into transition and then make the most of that. So turnovers and definitely hitting some outside shots to knock, excuse me, to open up the interior so Tina Charles can get some touches. Erica McCall on the floor, capable of scoring inside the three-point line as well. But um, floor's just not balanced right now for D.C. They're still in. Get on the lane, Kiara. You got to love being able to listen in to the coaches and players that are kind enough to wire themselves up so we can get a little inside and hear some of the action taking you to the floor. And why we are talking about Mike Tebow, what a job he did last season in the bubble in Bradenton. I mean, for Washington to make the playoffs with everything they were missing, Maisha Hines-Allen being their leading scorer, who saw that coming? <laughs> I mean, she averaged a career two points and was fantastic. I can't wait to see when she gets back. This could ultimately be the best front line in the WNBA and the deepest if they get Emma back as well. Yeah, Heinz Allen currently playing in France, so they are keeping eye on how she's doing overseas. Meanwhile, we talk about all these pieces. They added an important piece with Alicia Clark in the offseason. A defensive stopper. She injured herself while playing in France. So she's recovering from a foot injury. There she is. And coming up at the half, there will be plenty to talk about. Obviously, our next game with the Aces and the Storm, a rematch of last year's 
championship game coming up on WNBA Halftime Report presented by State Farm. Of course, we'll also talk about Candace Parker's debut with the Chicago Sky as well as the 2021 predictions as well. Would you like to chime in on perhaps if you think the Storm can repeat or will the Mystics at full strength make a run at another title? Remains to be seen. Huh? I think Seattle always has an opportunity when you've got Sue Bird and Brianna Stewart on the floor. But my favorite is definitely the Las Vegas Aces with the return of Liz Cambage. And I'm not someone that thinks that Asia Wilson won't repeat as MVP just because Liz Cambage is back. If history will tell us, there's been several instances where a player has won MVP and has a teammate that has averaged 17 or more points per game. We'll see Wilson take the court. A couple of great young players, the new stars of the league, Asia Wilson and Brianna Stewart, will be in action coming up after our game. And I know you mentioned, um, you know, Alicia Clark and, and her injury. In my preseason predictions, Washington definitely took a couple of, of slides, slides, slid a couple of spots in my preseason prediction when she got injured because I just thought she was going to be a key cog for this team. And you see her post-surgery, Liz Frank, I think, is the name of the injury, but don't quote me on that, <laughs> LaChina MD. Um, but, you know, the way that she can stretch the floor and how tough she is defensively, this is a Washington team that lost Ariel Powers, you know, some other changes as well with Tiana Hawkins no longer playing, uh, Latoya Sanders re retiring. I just thought Clark was going to be a perfect fit here, and um, that's one of the question marks is who's going to step up or what they would have gained at that, at that position. In transition, Cloud and McCall just loses the grip. And, and, and right now, the Mystics, again, just not currently well, in sync. There are a lot of things that could be figured out at halftime, and we know Mike Tebow is a terrific coach, and certainly they're missing the production of Helena Deladon, who had a historic 2019 season. We can't wait to get her back. Quickly with the spin move, left short. Leslie up the right side. And one of the promising young players dumps it off to Charles. And Charles, you can just see the frustration after that. Plow, the only one back on defense, and that frustration shove there as Copper gets it to go. Great, no great. one on the floor is faster than Kalia Popper up and down okay, the floor. And her and Diamond DeShields are going to have to battle it out when they're both out there because they're so fast in the sprint to the other end. And Copper's one of the best finishers in this league. I mean, you can try to cut her off on her way to the bucket. You can even get back in some instances and get in position to, def to defend, and she can still get the finish around the cup. She's just very crafty. Just look at the last few years for Kalia Copper. You think she was, you know, coming off the bench from 2017 to 2019, and then James Wade says, I'm going to make you a priority. I'm going to turn you into a playmaker. And they both believed, trusted, and they felt like that outstanding season from a year ago of her averaging uh, 15 points a game was just around the corner. Timeout taken on the court by the Mystics. Well, coming up at 3 Eastern on ABC, just a reminder to our viewers, Brianna Stewart and the defending champion Seattle Storm host Asia Wilson and the Las Vegas Aces in a rematch of last year's finals. You can also catch it on the ESPN app. Chicago Sky shooting 45% from the floor, even better from 3-6 of seven from beyond the arc and Candace Parker is perfect from long range. This second quarter has been owned 
by Chicago, but it's nice to be back on site seeing fans, although limited, inside the entertainment and sports arena. And this group got a chance to see the banner hung earlier this afternoon, right before the game of that 2019 championship season. It was a special one indeed for fans, but it also means something too, right, to the players to be able to see that hanging in the rafters. Well, and Mike Tebow said it feels kind of weird because it's so far removed. Obviously, Seattle Storm won the championship last year, but we really didn't get a chance to celebrate uh, the Washington Mystics, and their fans didn't. I mean, they didn't get a parade. Um, you know, there were some things that they missed out on um, due to COVID and, you know, everything that we've been through in our country. So, um, these are some pictures of them celebrating, and there's that beautiful banner. Right now, they've got some work to do, trailing 46 to 28. As they look to close out with the bang, going into the locker room as Cloud is fouled. And Natasha Cloud, fouled by Brittany Board Jones, goes to the line. And Cloud, who signed that multi-year deal back on March 10th, and she's a player who can really ignite this team on both ends of the floor, the engine that really drives this group so far. A slow start this afternoon with just four points. Well, the thing you have to remember about Natasha Cloud as well as Tina Charles. I mean, Tina Charles hasn't played in a year and a half. So you said something earlier about her frustration, and it's going to be, you know, getting back into form. I mean, this is your first real, real game in the regular season in Cloud as well. Um, and, and Cloud is, is playing with a different cast um, from the last time she played in 2019. So... Absolutely, familiarity will come over time. Just before the buzzer, no foul, and that's how they'll go into the locker room. A 16-point advantage for the Chicago Sky, powered by Candace Parker. An awesome first two quarters for the Chi-Town native. Three of four from long range. 13 points for the vet. Chicago up big. Her regular season debut, Candace Parker was doing Candace Parker things. She was leading the charge as the Chicago Sky got off to a great start in this one alongside LaChina Robinson. I'm Tiffany Green, and there was so much to like if you're a Sky fan and what you saw from Candace Parker and that offense and defense. Well, James Wade brought Candace Parker to Chicago to set the tone and bring that championship expectation. And that's exactly what she did from the point forward position. First on the interior, she's always going to make the next best pass, even though she could have made a move there down low. That's the forward side of her work. Here's the point side, leading the break. Then Courtney Vandersloo is free to get down the floor and use her passing ability. And how about this one? I mean, right on the money in the hands of Kalia Copper was Candace Parker. She can also get in the paint and play the physical game. She can stretch the floor. 13 points in that first half, six rebounds, three assists, three blocks. That defense, wait a minute. They, is she going to defend, is she gonna defend that defensive player of the year title? She might, Tiffany. <laughs> she says, you know, they were questioning yeah. my defense before. She left no doubt last season, and she is continuing to play well on both ends of the floor once more here this afternoon. Natasha Cloud coming out, and look, the Washington Mystics, they've got to find a way to get some juice on the offensive end. We mentioned in that first half with China just how this team is still working to gel together a lot of new pieces and a lot of missing pieces, but that's the welcome sign as Teresa Plaisons knocking down the baseline jumper. Well, there was a lot of foul trouble in the first half of Washington, most notably Ariel Atkins, who was one for four from the field. She had two personal fouls and was somewhat limited. Limited. She's a player that's going to have to step up, no doubt. I mean, we mentioned the entry to Alicia Clark, but Atkins, to me, is a star in this league, and she's going to show it in a game like this where they're not in rhythm, and she's got to make a, an impact on the offensive end. Well, she is coming off a career year. She put up great numbers in just about every category. Remember, she was one of those starting pieces on that 2019 championship team, and 
third consecutive year that she had made second team all defense and that remains a focal point for her they need her to try to create some chaos Copper off the miss, the shields, skying for the rebound, back out to Vandersloot on the miss, and Atkins bring it up the floor. We talked about those numbers from last year. About 15 points a game, Atkins average, placeants for three. And Atkins, right place, right time for the rebound, and doing some dirty work. That's actually what I remember most about Ariel Atkins when she got into the WNBA, is just her tenacity on the offensive boards. I mean, she's a dog. I mean, she will defend you, she will get to the glass, she is starting to add more dimensions to her offensive game, but she's a special player, and she's got to play like it. Parker knocked down three threes in the first half and missing there out of bounds, and Mystics will get the ball. Muriel Atkins going back to just what she's done. Seventh overall pick of that 2018 draft, and out of University of Texas. Just great anticipation at 5'11". Gets in there and crash into the perimeter. She was at home during the draft. Only took Mike Tebow knew what Ariel Atkins. Well, there may have been two or three other people that knew who Ariel Atkins was going to be, but not very many had her being picked seven. Well, he's a, a coach who just has a great eye for talent overall and, and really has seen this season as a reclamation project. There's some play songs on the tough end of that one. They have taken an elbow to the chin. Tangled up with Copper. Something that James Wade was concerned about coming into this game was Leilani Mitchell. You know, she lit Chicago up <laughs> in their last matchup. She's also 0 for 4. And, you know, when Tebow said this is what our offense should look like, he said Cloud should be taking shots, Mitchell should be taking shots, as Cloud's defense leads to offense. But they need Leilani Mitchell. And, and she did a nice job of getting acclimated to the Washington Mystics last year. This is a different team, but she's a capable scorer. Two-time, most valuable, most approved player, excuse me, and that ignites the crowd inside the arena as the Mystics trying to close the gap, trailing by 10, and the energy just permeating off of Natasha Cloud right now. Her team wrecking her way back in it. some college hoops royalty in the house this afternoon. Paige Beckers, nearly consensus national player of the year as just a freshman at UConn, taking in the game. You see the crutches there. Paige recently had surgery on that right ankle, but she has taken in some of her former Huskies, Stephanie Dolson out there, of course, Tina Charles, and Paige Beckers, I mean, between her and Caitlin Clark out of Iowa, ladies really started making conversation. Should the WNBA draft age requirement be lower because of the seasons that these two ladies had? But Paige Beckers in the house certainly wishing her a speedy recovery from that right ankle injury. Yeah, Paige Beckers was outstanding this season. And as you mentioned, Kim, watching those two freshmen and how high of a level of basketball they play just speaks volumes for how women's basketball is developing. The fact that we're even having the conversation about them being able to go right from freshman season to the WNBA, um, I mean, there's so much talent. I'm surprised AZ Fudd isn't here. I don't know where she is, but she'll be joining Paige. She's the DMV side of that duo that will be causing all kinds of issues for college teams when they're when they're playing together on the floor but we also saw in that frame Marissa Coleman, Crystal Langhorn, Bonnie Curry I saw in the crowd. There's a, a lot of love for uh, for girls and women's basketball in this area. And to answer Kim's question, no, not yet. And here's why. Because selfishly, I want to see them play a couple more seasons as they have to. You can turn pro as a junior. I want to see them play a little bit more and, and, and see what legacy they create on the college level before they get here. And two, it goes back to that conversation of expansion. Yeah. Uh, because only 144 are in the league. But Kathy Engelberg, the WNBA commissioner, did hint at if they do have a successful 2021 season, that that conversation can be on the table. The interest is definitely there, and the talent is there. I mean, no doubt to expand and, and have more teams, but 
I just love seeing college players actually engaged in the WNBA. There has to be a stronger connection between college players and college fans in the WNBA, you know? We're not taking summers off. College is over. We're right in the WNBA. Get into it. Well, what a terrific 25th season this is set out to be, but it also is an opportunity to celebrate those who helped to build this league when it began and formed back in 1996. The inaugural season was played in 1997. So Washington started to find their rhythm here in this third quarter. And Mike Tebow, who is a terrific coach, seeing them shoot the ball better. And what I thought worked for Washington as Kalia Copper just gets a steal on Atkins. What worked for them is they focused on rebounding. They focused on defense. Atkins went to the O boards. Cloud shot the gap. You're not always going to shoot the ball well, but there are other ways that you can create offensive opportunity. And they're a good example again of defense. Plaisance right there, right in the face of Dolson. And now the Mystics have the opportunity to cut this lead to single digits. Getting the ball right back. 15 points for Copper. And a foul whistled against Stephanie Dolson. <laughs> Leah Copper has just balled out so far here today. Five of nine and 15 points. While our WNBA coverage continues Tuesday, first at 8 Eastern. We're back here in Washington as the Mystics, Mystics take on Diana Taurasi and the Phoenix Mercury. Then at 10, it's the 2020 Finals rematch as the Aces and Storm go at it once more. Both games available on the ESPN app. Uh, and guess what? He'll get treated to that game right after this one. We'll just double dip right there. Yeah, I you thought know. Andrea Carter made an excellent point in half about Seattle and what they lost. You know, we talk about how much every other team in the WNBA got in the offseason in the acquisitions, but there's some teams that had major losses, and I do think Clark and Natasha Howard are big ones for the reigning champions. The addition of Candace Parker to the Chicago Sky has been a big piece. Sammy Whitcomb finding her place in New York. You're right. A lot of young talent. And Sammy Whitcomb was a spark for the storm. Sloop. Andrew Sloop into Dufal. And she's fouled. Stella Johnson whistled for her first personal foul. Another young player in this Mystic system who bounced around in a rookie season a year ago. Found her footing. She had a great game last year, put up career high points. Well, be sure to tune in to Around the Rim. That's the podcast that you want to listen out for, ESPN's only women's basketball podcast hosted by our very own, the illustrious LaChina Robinson. New episodes are released. They drop weekly, folks, and you can subscribe on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. I want to send a special shout-out to Around the Rim podcast producer, Tarika foster Bradley, who was a part of a group that raised the money for people to get a free WNBA league pass. I mean, there were so many folks that donated so that there's no excuse for not watching WNBA <laughs> because someone donated money for you to get a league pass. But Tarika was part of orchestrating that effort and just appreciate her and so many that do so much to, to grow the WNBA. Shout out to Tarika. And not only that, did you get a chance to utilize the split screen in the app? I should have last uh, night. Yeah, I, last I was night it was school. necessary. I was just old school, like, you know, oh, this game, go back to this one. And, oh, this has two minutes left. Oh, no. No, that's the antiquated way. <laughs> now, you, you, you got to utilize the split screen because there was so much good action. We had two going right down to the wire. But I used to watch it. I don't know what happened to that split screen or where the option is, because it's a new app. 
Yeah, well, I don't you know, know if you know this, but the WNBA redesigned the app. It's got, I mean, it pops up. Liz Camp Beige is in your screen looking fly. I mean, you know, they're doing big things. They're doing big things. And that just speaks to, again, the growth of this league and, and where it's gone. And the interest level, they continue to garner more and more fans game by game, season by season. And I think the hand is, uh, the league is in great hands with the talent we have here in this 25th season. going to be a foul call here, but I mean, this is what you look forward to if you're a Chicago Sky fan is that Courtney Vandersloot, yeah, Candace Parker definitely took her out, but she was trying to get some handoff action with Vandersloot, but Candace Parker can take the ball down now. You know, she can take some of the pressure off of Courtney Vandersloot having to have the ball in her hands so much because Parker can initiate and she can do so many things. You just see what her addition means in opening up the offense and allowing everyone to play their game and freely inside. Tina Charles popping it over to Johnson. Johnson driving baseline. Tried to find McCall, the turnover in the paint. Real crowded there. And Parker just missing the shield. I don't know if that was a turnover. Was that the Candace Parker block? I think that was block number four for CP3. Uh-oh. Let me give her her just due and her credit. She, she's just been disrupted. McCall, Erica McCall with the twofer. Mike Tebow warned us that even though McCall was late to camp, he said she's going to play. He said she was watching our, our practices and watching tape. And he said, D dummies don't go to Stanford. I mean, she has a high <laughs> basketball IQ and, and came in already knowing the plays and is, is playing good, good minutes today. Fifth season out of Stanford. Quigley, open look, won't fall. Charles tracking down the rebound. So Charles still the only player for the Mystics in double figures. On the cut there, McCall. And she's whistled for the offensive foul. Candace Parker on rotation. <laughs> I don't even know what to call that, that celebration. There's a shoulder shimmy, and then there's whatever Parker just did right here. But sees the offensive player coming, puts her body in space. And right here, okay, what's that? That looks like That's something. the crazy legs. Okay. That's the crazy okay, legs. At least yeah. you knew. I was going to say, look, look like a little bit like a tantrum, but like a dance as well. <laughs> we'll see that on TikTok real soon. Everybody get down and do the, C3, the CP3 uh, tantrum of crazy legs. The Shields posting up another iteration that they're looking to see. Traveling violation called against one in black. We hadn't heard from our girl Kim Adams in a while. Kim, what you got going on? Well, ladies, you were just talking about how much fun it appears that Candace Parker is having. And we were talking to her about mentally, does this new situation, this new city feel different? And she said, yes, everything is different, but in a good way. And she said she almost feels like she's in a bubble right now. Her daughter, Layla, is still back in L.A. finishing school. Happy belated birthday to Layla, by the way. But Candace said, for the first time in a while, I can really just focus on basketball. And she says there's challenge, there's change, but she loves change. And I, I just think she is playing so freely today and having so much fun, Tiffany. She can focus on basketball because she's in an apartment by herself, right? She said it feels like a bubble. Her mom's doing her laundry. Her dad's about to have a barbecue next week. So they're cooking for Parker's getting taken care of. And Trina's going to have to take care of her right here. She's limping back to the bench. Yeah, and, and that's one of the things you talked about looking at her and, and just giving uh, a look over her body. That's something that she's done is take care of her body and do a better job of listening to it. We heard that in Kim's report earlier with Elena Deladon and just being more in tune these days. And that's how you preserve your body when you have a lot of miles over the years having played basketball. And we're so fortunate that Candace Parker is wired up tonight. Let's listen in. Keep her left. Right 
Keep it right. Hey, hey, way to be on the nail. Uh, step up, step up. That was really great with our hands, with our length. Way to pick up. Good job. Way to keep zealous to her left and shooting jump shots. Good job. As a voice on this team, Candace Parker is keeping the main thing the main thing. She knows that defense is what this team needs. You get the defensive player of the year. The script could not be written better for Chicago, and she's leading with her voice and with her words and giving this team confidence that they have championship pedigree. And that's something that they're hopeful for, along with Tina Charles and this Mystics group who really hung their hat on defense. That's a big part of their identity. One of the strongest defensive teams in the league is the Mystics. They held opponents to just 76 points per game last season. That was best in the WNBA. Vandersloot, Courtney Vandersloot. Yeah, she can assist, but she can drop points. But what a different look for Chicago. The whole play develops away from Courtney Vandersloot. You can start to see just a freedom within the Chicago offense. Looking down low, Charles trying to work on the post, turn around, and off the mark. Well, you mentioned just the ability to have multiple ball handlers just dumping it right over to the Shields for the trifecta. Diamond to Shields, who talked about just the great synergy that she's had with Candace Parker since she joined the team. The challenge for Washington is being able to produce half-court offense. I mean, they've done a better job defensively in this third quarter, but they're still not consistently hitting shots. And you got to credit Chicago. Again, it's their activity. It's their length. And the number of looks they've given Tina Charles tonight has been just phenomenal because they have the forwards and the bodies to put length on her, to put girth on her, to challenge her in different ways. Johnson gets it up before the shot clock expires. Second chance opportunity and can hold for the final shot of the third quarter, trailing by 17. It's up in the air, no good. Atkins following her own shot. And that's the end of the third quarter. Final quarter coming your way from the nation's capital. Mystics got some work to do. On ABC, I'm joined by Tina Charles. And Tina, you guys are still chipping away at that lead, but what did you like about how your team came out of the locker room to start the third quarter? Uh, made a little run there, forced him to call a timeout, but, you know, we're taking a lot of jump shots. We need to get more points in the paint. We're taking a lot of jump shots, and we're missing, and they long rebounds, and they're able to just get it out and go in transition. So that's what's really, really killing us right now, just all these jump shots. We need to start getting stuff in the paint and make them call a, a foul. And this is a Valen Sky offense. What can you guys do to limit them here a little bit more to try and cut into this lead in the fourth quarter? Just one possession at a time, get a stop. Just focus on defense. You know, I need to finish better. I, I mean, I, the shots I miss, I miss, I can make it with my eyes closed. So that's a little bit frustrating, but just got to stay within the game. All right. Thank you so much, Tina. All right. And when you listen in to Tina Charles, you know, one of the things that helped them inch closer to Chicago was the fact when they started out that third quarter, they had eight paint points compared to none for Chicago, but they've got to do a more consistent job of that as Charles on the bench taking a breather with 14 points in her 29 minutes played so far. Now with a smaller lineup on the floor. Mike Tebow, and there's Clay Sons. With a good look, just wouldn't go down. Boy Jones, back up point guard. Foul on the floor. That one called against Stella Johnson. We should correction. I think 
We yeah. should also mention that Azare Stevens is still working her way back. She's out. But James Wade said we rushed her back last year. We're going to take our time working her back in. Nice move and finish by Stephanie Dolson there. Shyla Hill is in COVID protocol. She is their first round draft pick point guard out of Australia who will join the team when she's out of pro protocol. But it's interesting in watching Chicago, everyone said, well, they need a backup point guard, right? Because Sloot, uh, you know, has played a lot of minutes. She's had to carry the load. And Candace Parker has handled a lot of <laughs> point guard responsibility. And, and the way they run, Kalia Copper can, can initiate it. Diamond to Shields. A lot of capable ball handlers, and you have to try to find a way to slow down these guards for the sky. Looking for Ruby Hebert. Hebert. Now the University of Oregon off the screen. Brittany Boyd Jones missing there. Just not falling right now. 61 42, Chicago with the advantage. And Mike Tebow allows his team to take a quick open three when they're hitting them, but they're three for 25, so the ball may need to move a little bit more. And I'm sure Leilani Mitchell is anxious to get on the board 0 for 5 today. Paul working on Hebert. The left hand. No, but the right hand is true. And she doesn't give up on a play. I mean, the reason why Erica McCall continues to show up on rosters in the WNBA, as we mentioned her IQ, but she also just plays so hard. She's never going to give up on a possession. That's something Mike Tebow saw in the bubble as he got a chance to watch her last season, and he feels like he can bring out the best in her. And that's why she's got a spot on the roster. Mitchell trying to cut through the turnover. Sky getting out of transition and Copper, you just see the speed. The 94 oh, yeah. feet is just nothing for her. It looks like a track. Oh, Copper continuing to shine. 17 points. Leading all scorers here this afternoon. They get it down to McCall. McCall once again. What a feel and what a great delivery. I mean, this group has got some chemistry. They're able to finish on the interior. Ruthie Hebert in the game for Chicago. Again, they can chip away at this lead. Let's go back to just what Erica McCall has done the last couple trips down the floor. Yeah, Teresa Plaisance with a perfect pass. Puts that right in the hands of McCall, who's begging for it. has got her defender on the backside. Chicago defensively with Boyd out in transition at Copper. Boy, just faster than everyone else. <laughs> it's a track meet. Full out. I'd love the timer from one end of the floor to next. Mitchell, corner three, no good. Well, the Chicago Sky who trying to build on that one conference championship that they have. Made it all the way to the WNBA Finals in that year. And then you think about last season, uh, they are trying to bounce back after a first round exit to the Connecticut Sun. This is a group who has already shown early on. This is just the first regular season game. Look, China, we got 31 more to go, but of just their potential. James Wade talked to us a lot about analytics and how when the ball touches the paint, they are better. When the ball, when they make an extra pass, they are a better team. And they've got 19 assists, and I do believe it's because They've done those things. Copper, who took a hard fall to the floor, and she's being helped up by her teammates. We'll take a break. Hope you'll come right back with us. She really made her mark an imprint when she was in Minnesota. Four-time WNBA champion, the finals MVP in 2011, eight-time All-Star. 
And that big announcement is certainly watching one of the best to touch the court step aside and take on a different role and connect it to the game. A Hall of Fame career for Simone Augustus, who, I mean, what a story of her going to Minnesota. The team was not good. She had to fight through injuries, but it was her resilience that really allowed that organization to reach that next level and to get to those four championships. Yes, they added Maya. Yes, they eventually added Sylvia Fowles, who came because of Simone Augustus, but she was the foundation of the success they had there. And even her as a player, her ability to make one-on-one -on -one shots, she's like a, an and one, right? The crossovers. She's got arguably the best mid-range game on the pull-up, um, you know, extending her range over the course of her career. But the impact that she will have now will be tremendous. I mean, she's exploring things with her own fashion brand. But as a coach, she's got to be one of the highest basketball IQ players I have ever talked to. She doesn't do a lot of talking, but when she does, she's always saying something that's going to impact the game in a major way. So uh, congrats to Simone, and we're excited about what's ahead in your future. Yeah, 15-year veteran. We spent her final season with the Los Angeles Sparks. Candace Parker had the opportunity to play with her a season ago. And Money moan. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> We've seen from this Washington Mystics group, LaChina, just still a figuring out phase, right? And, and, and Mike Tebow talked to us just about how it's a layered approach and how they are coming into this season. Don't have all the full pieces. Tina Charles in her debut with the Mystics. Natasha Cloud coming back after opting out of last season as well. And Elena Deladon, when she gets 100% healthy, she's already getting into the action. Still no live contact yet, but they will be happy to see her when she returns. And then, of course, a question mark around the 2019 Finals MVP, Emma Miesemann. Yeah, I think we calculated there were, what, two players available today that played on that championship team. Um, so, you know, not a lot of that residue in, in terms of that experience uh, because of injury and, and other factors. But, um, you know Mike Tebow, and he's a great coach, and uh, Washington will be ready when the time is right, if they can get healthy. I think Elena Deladon is is key, and, and obviously Emma Misa's a Emma Misaman's return, but don't sleep on my Shahid's Allen. For more on the Mystics, let's send it over to Kim. Yeah, Tiffany LaChina, I mean, Coach Tebow telling us this is truly a team that's still in development. It is basically a brand new team, and, and he's asking the fans to be patient. There truly is going to be phases to the season for this group. Obviously, Elena Deladon coming back will be a huge, huge piece, but, but just talking to him, talking to Tina Charles on the great culture here, the winning culture, and that's a big part of why Tina Charles decided to come here. She said the moment she signed, the first text she received said, this is day one of defending a championship. Of course, that was after the 2019 season. So, you know, it, it's going to take some time with this group for sure, and I think everyone knows that, and everyone knows that how much of a, a masterful roster and peace builder that Mike Tebow is. Yeah, this is the first time, Kim, to your point that Tina Charles has been a part of an organization that has that championship culture. And she said she wakes up and she's excited every day to learn, to grow. I mean, her level of maturity and her outlook, but also how she gives us a glimpse at what Washington has built here as an organization is really special. I mean, this was a Mystics team that was dry for many years, and not until Mike Tebow's arrival did this It'll become a place where people want to come and play, and, and free agents are excited, and the fans in D.C. are great. So um, looking forward to what Tina will do here. Yeah, and the relationship that she already had established with Mike Tebow after they were together in Connecticut. She won the 2012 MVP oh, under his tutelage. And, and, and then, too, she mentioned just how consistent of a person he is and how he just encourages character and community service. And, and we've seen the Washington Mystics, just like other WNBA franchises, really stand at the forefront front of social change and trying to provide a voice for the voiceless and I think Tina Charles is adding to that Natasha Cloud is the player that 
obviously jumps out to you. Her work off the court as Candace Parker with the bucket. Yeah, I mean, there's a culture here that you, you're allowed to use your voice, you know? And, and Mike Tebow, as Tina Charles told us, he's not just worried about me as a player. He wants me to be active in, in the community and wants to know about Hopi's Heart Foundation and, you know, encourages Natasha Cloud to use her voice and encourages these women, as you remember, their response to Jacob Blake shooting last year to use their platform. Big advantage for the Chicago Sky here at home for the Mystics. They're trailing by 19. The WNBA on ABC is presented by Google. Chicago. Well, Candace Parker wanting to come to Chicago has a lot to do with James Wade and his wife, Edvige Lawson Wade, who we got the pronunciation of Edvige from her, from her hubby. He wanted to make sure we got that right. She's a former WNBA player, but Candace has a special relationship with Edvige and actually called her to tell her she was coming to Chicago and they had their son tell James. But, you know, that's what you want is a head coach in place that not only understands the game and the X and O's, but has the kind of relationships that you can attract players. They want to come play with you and he's enjoy play for you and he's enjoyed listening to Candace, learning from her. They talk basketball, they talk strategy. He allows her to have input. And Candace said, he's gonna let me be myself. He is going to let me be Candace Parker. And he reiterated that. And that's going to be an important dynamic as this season goes on. Well, I think the impact or the connection that you have won because Wade played overseas. And then, of course, he had that championship experience as he was uh, assistant on the Lynx under Cheryl Reed. Then he takes over in Chicago. His first season, 2019, goes on to win the WNBA Coach of the Year. And so now this is a team that has been on the brink the last couple of seasons, and they feel like they can, for real, for real, as you said, do it with this court. We just kept getting the feeling that Chicago was missing something to get them over the hump. Candace is that hump. She gets the, she gives them over, plus one, with that championship experience. I mean, that's really what, to me, you know, late game situation executing and defense buying in, like the confidence that her voice will give this team is, is just immeasurable. And she does it all too. Legina, I mean, I, we've talked about the basketball player that she is. Kim mentioned, you know, mother of a 12-year-old, but also a broadcaster as well and juggling all of those things and doing so in a graceful manner. She's garnered the respect of everyone. I mean, she manhandles Shaq <laughs> every week. Come on, Shaq. Get your basketball up. The Washington Mystics will go back to the drawing board and try to figure things out before they host the Phoenix Mercury. Tuesday will be again on the call for that game at 7.30 Eastern over on ESPN2. And, you know, one of the question marks for me is, as they welcome in Brittany Griner is on the interior defensively. You know, Elena Deladon is underrated in what she gives you in terms of her length at the rim. And you don't have Latoya Sanders um, anymore. So, you know, can Tina Charles handle those assignments as they get all of their length and size back and they get healthy? Um, you know, that's, that's a big question going into a game like Tuesday. I'm excited to see the second edition of the big three potentially for a full season with Reiner, Tarasi, and Skylar Diggins-Smith. Teresa Plaisance will get some minutes, I'm sure, on that, on that place. But they'll spread, they're going to try to spread BG out a little yeah. bit. You know that. <laughs> Scouting report, bring BG out of the paint. That's right. And got a lot of defensive preseason defensive player of the year nods, including mine. I, I think it's going to be a big season for Brittany. I really do. After leaving the, bu the bubble early, and she just seems like she's the best version of herself right now. Yeah. And, and just talking about that bubble experience, if you had not the opportunity to check out 144, it aired uh, just a couple days ago, and you can see it on the ESPN app. Shout out to Chenea Gumake for doing a great job as the executive producer of that, really chronicling and seeing what these players had to go through in the bubble last season. Winding 
down here in this one. As the Mystics have been held to 55 points so far in this one. And one of the things, too, LaChina, we talk about just continuing to add pieces for Mike Tebow and this group as they regroup Sydney Weiss coming on. They signed her earlier this week, so that's another veteran presence and guard being able to handle the ball for the Washington Mystics as time winds down and a big season opening win for Candace Parker and the Chicago Sky 70 to 56 the final score what a terrific offensive performance but an all-around game from Parker and the Sky finished with 16 points eight rebounds and three blocks well our final 70 56 Coming up next, our WNBA coverage continues with the Aces and Storm. For Kim Adams, LaChina Robinson, I'm Tiffany Green. We'll see you.